Good evening, everyone. This side, Sangamitra from National Health Authority. I'm working over here as the consultant. And along with me is Yogesh. He's also uh, working as a consultant in NHA. Today, we are here to uh, have the webinar on the revised guidelines for DHIS, which is Digital Health Incentive Scheme. And recently, we have uh, actually um, introduced some relaxations uh, in this policy. So we just wanted to get on board everyone so that everybody is aware about this. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. So just to share you the background of how this uh, digital health incentive screen, uh, scheme had come up. This was actually introduced um, last year in December. And uh, the actual, the launching of this scheme happened in January. So um, the main aim was that uh, all the stakeholders, which are hospitals, which are labs, the small clinics and the nursing homes, they should be able to get some benefits out of this digital health incentive scheme. Whatever cost is incurred in that digitization process, we wanted to reimburse some of the that cost also. Plus we wanted to make these stakeholders have an easy adoption for the ABDM ecosystem. And thirdly, since we were giving financial incentives, we thought that this would act as one motivator for them to enable digitization in their respective organizations. Now coming to uh, the scheme, um, the main stakeholders uh, for the scheme are as shown in the slide, which are hospitals, clinics, and nursing homes. In the old policy, which we had from January to March, which means from 1st January to 31st March, we were having the bed criteria for the hospitals. So we were only uh, making those hospitals eligible, which were having at least 10 beds in the facility, 10 IPD beds. But now we have removed this criteria because we had feedback from our stakeholders and uh, we actually wanted to benefit those hospitals also, which had less beds or those which um, were daycare centers or the small clinics. So the transaction limit uh, for both hospitals as well as labs, it is amounting to the same eligible criteria, which is 20 rupees per transaction. Now for the digital solution companies, which are basically the software providers in the hospitals or in the labs, we have clubbed them into two categories. So one is the hospital management information system and one is lab information management system. The another category is the health locker and the teleconsultation. So both of these entities, we are giving rupees five per transaction. If you want to uh, uh, ask the definition of transaction, we'll come in the later slide and we'll understand what a transaction means actually. Now this is uh, the eligibility criteria uh, with which stands into force with effect from 1st of April. As I mentioned that all the health facilities, uh, which means the clinics, the, the hospitals, the nursing homes, uh, they should be having the software linkage with ABDM. But we have removed the bed count here. So this is the only criteria which is required for the hospital. <clears throat> the labs and the radiology centers, they should again be registered in, in the HFR. Uh, which is this is the primary criteria that they should be uh, a part of health facility registry. And in the health facility registry, they can register themselves as imaging center or a diagnostic lab. <clears throat> now coming to uh, the digital solution companies, here there are basically two criteria for them. One criteria is applicable to the HMIS and the LMIS players. So these HMIs and the LMIs players, they should be at least associated with 10 facilities, which means that at least 10 hospitals or 10 labs should be using their software. 
on the other hand if i talk about uh, the eligibility criteria for the locker and the teleconsultation um, services the criteria is that they should be having at least 500 transactions a month so up to 500 they won't get any incentive after 500 uh, uh, they basically their the incentive starts Uh, now, uh, this is actually the criteria which has been uh, reflected in detail on this slide. For hospitals, clinics and nursing homes, the base level criteria is set to 100 transactions a month, which means that up to 100 transactions if any facility is doing, then we are not giving any incentive. So basically, incentives are going to start after 100 transactions. and the base limit uh, is actually same for both the both lab as well as the hospitals. Now the incentive amount is also same for both hospitals as well as labs, which is rupees twenty per additional transaction above the base level. I'll just uh, take an example here. For example, any hospital is doing two hundred transactions a month. So up to 100 transactions, the hospital is not going to get any incentive. But actual incentive is going to start after crossing the 100 transaction, which means the hospital is going to get here 100 into 20, which means 2000 rupees is what the hospital will earn here as an incentive. Now, if I talk about the digital solution company, let's see, uh, I use the same example here that uh, there is a digital uh, uh, solution company, uh, the software provider, which is uh, being uh, the services for which are being used in a hospital. The same hospital which was doing 200 transactions, if the DSC also claims incentive here, then the DSC is going to get 100 into 5 rupees, which means 500 rupees is what the DSC will earn for, against this hospital. As I was mentioning for the health locker and the teleconsultation uh, providers, the base capping is 500 transactions per month. Um, now, again, the uh, incentive is the same, which means rupees 5 would be given after 500 transactions are done. Just a second, my screen has frozen actually. We are just resuming uh, there's some IT issue. Sorry for the glitch. So uh, as I was mentioning about uh, the digital solution companies that uh, uh, those with health locker and uh, teleconsultation providers they are supposed to do at least 500 transactions a month to get 
incentives. Now, here are some examples which I have selected to give you a better understanding of how the incentive scheme works. Let's say there is a hospital uh, which is doing 500 transactions in a month. Now, first we will calculate what is the eligible transactions here. So, as I mentioned that the base capping is 100. So, we'll subtract 500 minus 100 which comes as 400 transactions. So although the total transactions are 500, but the eligible transactions for that particular hospital is 400. And we will multiply it by 20 because for one transaction, we are giving 20 rupees. So the hospital here is going to get 8,000 rupees as the incentive. Now, if I talk about the corresponding uh, digital solution company, which now is going to get incentive of uh, we will first calculate uh, the base which is 500 uh, total transaction which the hospital has done minus 100 because the capping is the same 400 transaction but we'll multiply it by 5 so the dsc is going to get 2000 rupees so since screen is not visible is my screen not visible? Okay, thank you. So uh, this is how we will calculate the incentive for both the hospital as well as the DSC. The second example states that the hospital is doing 60 transactions in a month. Now, as we have seen that as per our eligibility criteria, we need to have at least 100 transactions. So in this case, we are not going to give any incentive, neither to the facility, neither uh, nor the DSC. Now, the third example is that uh, there is a hospital where uh, the scan and share tokens are being generated 450 in number using uh, the ABDM software, ABDM compliant software. So in this case, we also uh, include in our transaction definition that scan and share is a part of the digital health incentive scheme. So we will count these tokens generated also as the, the eligible criteria for the incentive scheme. So again, we would uh, subtract the base level here, 450 minus 100, which comes as 350, and we would multiply it by 20. The facility is going to get here as 7,000 as the incentive amount. And DSC would again get as 5 rupees per transaction. Now, uh, this is actually the comparison uh, between the old scheme and the new scheme. Uh, for hospitals, uh, we had the initial criteria of minimum 10 beds, that the hospital has to have minimum 10 beds to claim the incentives. But now that criteria has totally been removed. Another difference is uh, that for a lab, we have reduced the base level transaction. Initially, it was 500. Now we have brought down it to 100 as the base level. Uh, for a DSC, the amount is the same because initially we were giving 25% of the incentive which is received by the hospital. Uh, but now we have given it as a standard number which is rupees 5 per transaction. So there is not much of a difference for a DSC. However, uh, as per the old policy, we were giving 20% extra incentive if the DSC is certified by Quality Council of India. But now we have actually removed that clause. We are not going to give any additional incentive here to the DSC if the DSC is QCI certified. For a locker, we also have again reduced the base level of transactions. We had uh, 2000 as the base level criteria for DSC, but now we have reduced it to 500. 
and as i mentioned in the previous slide that we have included scan and share transactions also we were not giving any incentives for that in the old policy but for this new policy applicable from 1st april we have actually included scan and share also and uh, the base level criteria is the same it is 100 transactions minimum now uh, coming to what a transaction means uh, so the definition of transaction is basically uh, divided into two parts first is that the health rec record is getting generated now a health record could be anything it could be a discharge summary it could be uh, any opd prescription or any lab report any any kind of document which is generated for that patient now just generation of the health record is not important it should also be linked to the ava address of that patient then only we will call it as a transaction and as i mentioned that uh, the scan and share feature also is included now in the incentive scheme and we call that as a transaction but the corresponding uh, hospital is going to definitely going to get the incentive but the phr app here is not going to get incentive HMIS or LMIS, uh, which is uh, being run in that hospital or, or the lab, is going to get incentives here for the scan and share feature. Now, there comes a very important clause, which is we call it as one in five clause. So, uh, let's say that uh, as a patient, I have had five kind of encounters today in the hospital I visited. Um, I uh, have uh, consulted a doctor, doctor had generated a prescription and then doctor had suggested me two, three lab tests and maybe one x-ray also. So total five transactions are done for me. But, but the incentive scheme is going to count only one transaction out of those five. And similarly for a complete month, if whatsoever number of transactions are done in a complete month, we are going to calculate only five transactions which are eligible for the incentive scheme. So it is basically maximum of one transaction per day and five transactions per month against the ABHA address which would be a unique address for every patient. Uh, these are some of the documents uh, which are required for digital health incentive scheme. Um, any entity uh, like hospital or a clinic or a lab, they have to register in the HFR portal and the digital solution companies, they have to register in the sandbox portal. Now, uh, four kind of uh, documents are basically required for, for this registration. Uh, one is the cancelled check. One is the cancel check of that entity, which is uh, having all the details, um, the, the initial four details like the name, the bank account number, the name and address of the bank branch and IFSC code, they all would be mentioned in the cancel check. The second document required is the PAN card of the entity. The third type of document is the bank mandate form and fourth is the annexure form. We'll just see in the next slides how, how it uh, looks like. Um, this is how um, the calculation of incentives uh, would be done. Um, we would initially uh, uh, try to keep it once a month payment cycle, but going forward when the number of incentives, the number of claims would be increasing, we would be keeping it as twice a month. Also, uh, one important thing here is that uh, if any facility is is doing transactions which are uh, worth rupees 2500 as the claim amount. We, we would uh, be crediting that, but if it is less than 2500, let's say uh, if any facility this month has done 1000 uh, thousand rupees incentive amount, they have earned rupees 1000 as an incentive amount, but we will not be able to credit that rupees 1000 in the same month. 
but it would be on a cumulative basis. So maybe next one they do 1500 more and then the total is 2500. Then we would be able to credit that amount. So this is just to uh, minimize the administrative workload because although we have our tech systems in place, but still some manual work is required at our end. Uh, this is actually the email ID of uh, the DHIS team, abdm.incentive. It is abdm.incentive also and abdm.incentives also. So both are both are working. And um, this is actually the screenshots which we have taken uh, for the facility which has logged in into HFR. And they would be able to see uh, the tab of registration. So once the software linkage has been done, they have put the bridge ID and then they are able to see this uh, tab here. And uh, they, they would be required to upload these documents which are mentioned over here. Again, uh, the bank details are mentioned here. This is how uh, uh, the uploading of the documents uh, would take place. So uh, I was telling you that the cancel check and the PAN card uh, would be mandatory. Uh, for now, uh, the bank mandate form, we had actually kept it as non-mandatory for a while, but uh, uh, we would need it to process the claims. So I would suggest that this is also uh, an important step here. Bank mandate form basically means that uh, the bank is certifying that, yes, this is uh, the name of the entity and the account holder is this. So this bank certifies on your behalf. And an exure form is only needed when there is some discrepancy between the entity name and the bank holder name. So it is only required in that, that case. Otherwise, it is not mandatory. Um, now, uh, we are actually doing a change in this step. Uh, we are bringing Aadhaar authentication and the e-sign mandate uh, in the beginning of the registration. So, uh, like in this screen, you are seeing it uh, once the registration is finished. But uh, going forward, maybe by this week end, we would bring it as the first step for registration. This is how uh, the e-sign template would look like once uh, that step is completed. This is uh, the screenshot taken for uh, the digital solution company when they log in into the sandbox. Again, there, there would be same details which would be required, uh, just like for any facility. So uh, we have seen today how we have uh, brought out uh, relaxations in the digital health incentive scheme and uh, how are we going to process the claims. Uh, we are going to soon have integration with PFMS also. So that is also something in the pipeline. Now we are open to questions. Uh, as I can see that two participants have raised hand. Sumit. Oh, hi. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for this updated information. And uh, I would like to ask you, uh, because my startup, uh, uh, we are actually launching some healthcare devices. Okay. And basically we all are right. developing... Uh, diagnostic devices and we are going to put all those devices at most of those PHCs or wellness centers uh, which are working under Ayushman Bharat Yojana. Okay, so what kind of devices, Sumit? Uh, basically, we are doing diagnostic testing. So for the test kit reader, so we are like uh, helping uh, many tests, let's say HIV, COVID, and many other. Like we are considering more than uh, 150 tests there, uh, hepatitis, and many other tests, and we are like uh, digitally reading those tests with quantitative analysis. And we are uh, exporting those reports okay. linked with your AVA card. Basically, and we are exporting those to the ABDM platform. Okay. So it is like POCT if I'm uh, not exactly. wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. So my question is, in that case, how do you consider? Because uh, uh, we are like link, we are not directly linking with LMI system or something. So we're gonna have our own softwares, which is going to be linked with Abha card, right? So in that case, how we are eligible for this in incentive program? We are like, I mean, basically we are trying to connect all those wellness center to the BDM platform. And, and, and uh, importantly, our uh, scope is to connect wellness centers from the rural area. So that is something we are focusing and targeting as of now. And, uh, and uh, Sumit, who would be your client here? As in, uh, you would be working for whom? Like I said, right now we are running one uh, pilot project. So we are going to start with the Maharashtra state. Okay. So under government's wellness centers, let's say we have around uh, several thousand wellness centers, right? But we are only targeting where we can have technical facilities available there. And uh, we have some uh, lab technicians who can take care of the device, who can conduct the test. And through them, we are trying to export the reports to the BDM platform. Right, so probably right. you can say PSCs, you can say primary healthcare centers, uh, you can say. Okay. So, Sumit, if uh, if the report is going to be generated uh, on uh, on your portal, mm -hmm. so so then we can consider you as as LMIs. Okay, got it. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't find yet any other option for you. Okay, got it. And I have one short thing, uh, second question. Again, we are developing some new test kits. So, for example, we are trying to conduct multiple tests on a single test kit. Okay. So, let's say influenza A, influenza B, and COVID. So, we are conducting three tests under one test kit. So, in that case, will it be considered as a single test when we are reporting reports, right? Because we are reporting all those things to the BDM platform. So, there will be three test reports. Mm -hmm. Will it be a single test or three tests? It will be considered. So, uh, Sumit, if it is done in a single day, like see all, mm -hmm. all the uh, types of tests are done in a single day, then I would be able to count only one as the transaction. Okay. But Got let's it. say if it is done, let's say one is done today and another one is done tomorrow, then I can count it as two. Understood. And, and similarly, maximum what I can count is five in a month. So more than five, I will not be able to count in a month. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, Rahul. Uh, Hello. Rahul Ma good afternoon. Hi, hi, Rahul. Ma'am, I have a, a, a single question. Uh, that uh, we are doing, ma'am, uh, our registration through Canon Share module. And we are, ma'am, looking further for LI, LMIS2. Ma'am, I am just uh, want to ask that. Uh, it, these, uh, uh, if uh, one only one uh, transaction is allowed so for per day, uh -huh. ma'am, it, uh, it would be connected to each other or uh, it would be counted uh, in different ways. So Rahul, uh, you are saying that uh, you are uh, LMIS also plus you are doing uh, generating scan and share tokens also, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So uh, Rahul, what we'll do, we'll sum up both these. I mean, uh, the mm -hmm. transactions from LMIS plus uh, the scan and share transactions, the tokens generated, we'll, we'll yes. add up both of these. And then we are going to apply this one and five clause. Yes, ma'am. Ma that would be very better because the person, uh, ma'am, that limit should be uh, around to 10. Ma'am, because when the patient comes to our uh, hospital, uh, he, uh, he goes to very different uh, Ma'am, when we are going to implement that radiology one system, RIS, ma'am, uh, at that time, uh, this limit could create an interest. Uh, no, definitely we'll take that point. Uh, but for this policy, I mean, this uh, new revised policy, the limit is one and five only. But definitely we can consider if uh, the transactions are more or we, if we have more stakeholders associated with us. Rahul, I hope your question is answered. Okay, Pankaj. Hi, thanks. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks for the excellent uh, detailing. Look, we are uh, just fairly new, and uh, this is my first uh, presentation where I'm, we are trying to get a hand of a handle of everything. My uh, so what we do is we have got a solution uh, right now deployed in around more than thousand uh, plus clinics. And it's a paper and a pen solution. Whatever the doctor writes on that piece of paper, it digitizes instantly. 
and uh, there okay. is a prescription record which is created and we are generating more than one and a half lakh prescriptions uh, every month and we are growing at around 15 20 percent every month so in next few months we'll hopefully okay. be around two lakh and we've got already what is the name? sorry what sorry is the name of the company what uh, is name the of the name company of the... is wonder rx w-o-n-d-r-x Okay. So it's a very easy to adopt solution because doctors don't have to type. They continue writing and still they are digitizing uh, the entire patient records. And uh, okay. we already have digitized more than 15 lakh uh, prescriptions. So my only help which I need from you guys is any technical help so that we can integrate with Sandbox and we can be a good contributor of around 2-3 lakh prescriptions every month to you. Sure, sure. We are definitely there for that. Uh, you can write to us uh, on the mail on the mail ID integration dot support at the rate nha dot gov dot in. Can you type it, ma'am? In the in the yeah yeah I can. We can type it in the chat box. Yeah. So any kind of query with respect to uh, the milestones M one M two M three. Yeah. Uh, you can send us email on this and and we will have it replied. Sure, that that will be a great help. And second, so, you know, uh, I have uh, I have Gurmeet also Gurpreet also with me, who is from the integration team. Okay. If you have any queries specific to integration, he can answer those. Yeah, so I will have to bring in my technical team uh, from my startup. I am not the technical guy over here. No problem. Uh, no problem. But then uh, that's the model. So I think, and then we have got a lot of uh, lab reports which patients are uploading onto our app their x-rays, their MRIs and everything. So we we are a integrated solution provider for a lab, for a radiology, pathology, pharmacy. So all these documents, health records of the patients are aggregating onto our system. So uh, we wanted to see how we can collaborate with you guys on this. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, so to answer that, uh, uh, you can basically visit the Sandbox site and mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, register on Sandbox to start your uh, uh, integration journey with ABDM. Okay, no, so we have registered, but I think there are some technical complexities the team was facing. So if we can set up a technical call wherein our solution architect and the team can be given some handholding to get going. I uh, just wanted to ask that uh, in this application, what you have selected as a type of entity, whether it is government or private? Uh, it's a private. Okay. Okay. So I think so that would be the, I think so you need to write on integration dot support. I think so they would reach out to you. Fair enough. We'll do that as well. And uh, yeah. second quick observation and feedback was look on the uh, incentivization while it will not impact us because our volumes are pretty high, but if somebody is contributing 100 or 500 and delimiting mm -hmm. them would be not good because if look somebody is making an effort of 500 one, he would lose on the entire incentives of 500, which you would have done. That was one and yeah, buy five rupees to the uh, solution providers wherein they can be your best contributors in the whole aggregation of data. So it's a discrimination. It's <laughs> no, it's not discrimination. <laughs> if the volume is going to pick up, then it's not a discrimination anymore. Yeah, no, no, so, but we can be, so look, your objective is to get the whole data at one particular place integrated. We are your best partners to give you the transaction. Hospitals normally do not take efforts. We will be the guys who will take efforts. And one fourth of their incentive is, is really a discrimination for us. You should relook at so, that, please. We'll, we'll relook, we'll relook. Sure. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, Saurabh Jain. Saurabh Jain, you had any question? Yeah, hi. Uh, this is Saurabh from Genital Innovations. Uh, we have uh, maternity or pregnancy related healthcare devices as well as software. So uh, our software is mainly focused in the labor duration, right? So whatever uh, data which has to be filled in during labor, whatever is required for partograph, we collect that data oh, and gosh. that data all comes every 30 minutes. So how will the transaction system work? That was the first question. So uh, uh, basically, you have HMIS. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we are not HMIS completely. We just look into the labor part of the whole journey right now at this point of time. Okay, and and where uh, this record is, uh, I mean, um, being populated on the hospital software or how is it? I mean. 
so i'll give you a brief uh, understanding of how our uh, offerings are so we have our software which is deployed with hospitals uh, that is uh, we are working with couple of governments as well uh, that is the goal is to digitize the labor ward and uh, there is a very common practice of creating partographs which is which was done till date manually on paper and there were a lot of problems human errors because of that uh, sometimes it happens post delivery which is not something like that's not a standard practice or that shouldn't be done it is the whole idea of photography is to help during the like for doctor to take better decisions how they want to move ahead with the pregnancy uh, or there any complications or not so our software digitizes that process and with for that you have to record data every 30 minutes uh, there are six parameters which are recorded every 30 minutes we do have hardware for that as well but there is no necessity of hardware so just trying to understand whenever we get that data will be sync so for us we sync that data to our server because there is a live monitoring aspect to it as well so how will it work when we integrate with aba so uh, saurabh till now uh, we don't have any any entity uh, with us uh, like you but but yes definitely we can uh, we can work on this because you are you are neither uh, hmis nor lmis nor health locker nor teleconsultation so we'll have to create some separate uh, uh, category type for you so i'll have to discuss this with with the nha leadership and then we can take take it forward if if you can uh, give me your contact details uh, you can uh, pin me separately on on the chat so then we'll take it forward Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I'll drop my contact details, and if possible, share your contact details as well, so I can reach out in the future. Sure. Sure. You can ping me on the chat. I don't think there is an option to ping you directly. Is uh, you can you can, can mention your email ID uh, on the chat. Uh, I think okay. that should be done. Then we'll connect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, Shilpi. Uh, Shilpi, are you there? Dinesh, uh, Dinesh, are you there, Dinesh? Yeah, ma'am, I'm there. Good evening, ma'am. So Hi. my question is, uh, uh, we are actually planning to build one uh, ABA app uh, in a, a startup manner. So. what are the compliance and the regulations i need to follow while building uh, the app um, in the basis of uh, uh, the security purpose the data privacy and all uh, what where should where are the compliance and the rules and regulation whom, whom to approach to get all these data uh, first first of all uh, you first uh, have you registered on sandbox No sir, I had aware of uh, and all. So sir, first of all, I think so you would be requiring your registration to be done on Sandbox. Secondly, is that you should be uh, for security purpose uh, uh, the security audit uh, that is to be done for each and every step like P one, P two, P three, P four. There are separate stages. So for that, you must have a certain impaneled agency that is doing your security audit. okay okay uh, while you are building and there are some apis then uh, uh, there are some apis for, uh, that would be required uh, you need to consume those apis for uh, uh, building your ab application and uh, then uh, you will get one you will have one functional testing for each and every step like p1 p2 p3 p4 for every functionality which you have built for your ab application there would be separate functional testing that would be required security audit that would be done one htc demo that would be done at each and every uh, step uh, after that when you will get the approval so you will be shared with the production keys which you have, which you can deploy on production server okay sir uh, my next doubt is like uh, whether uh, we are having incentive for registration like uh, the same uh, are we having anything uh, for developing of app no no there is no incentive for uh, developing of app incentive is purely based on the transactions you do okay like uh, if a multinational like uh, big corporates are uh, already using their patient registration system so um, uh, 
so the if if you are generating uh, if you are generating uh, scan and share tokens okay that then, that looks like barcode or qr code anything like that correct right? correct that is qr co code based scan and share okay so if you are a part of that then you would be eligible okay ma'am okay thank anything you anything else okay okay dinesh uh, can you share your uh, contact details in case if any uh, clarifications needed further i can uh, message you yeah i i will just share my email id uh, on the chat sure thank you sure uh shivaran shivaranjan shiva uh, nagarjun sorry yeah hi ma'am uh good evening hi yeah actually i have three questions number one we, are, we have the app uh, for online consultation video consultation for doctor and patient you know right so is there any okay. we will get uh, incentives here so the the doctor yeah, uh, the, yeah ma'am please me sure sure you will get the incentive because then you would registered as a teleconsultation provider but yeah, the, only the prescription generated should be linked to the aba address so the the prescription linked by the doctor right yeah yeah doctor only so then uh, how the phr app, uh, like uh, the mobile application owner like uh, the uh, like we are from the wellness how we will get from the incentives so every uh, once the doctor uh, uploaded any uh, document so uh, the in incentives will come to us no uh, sir this would follow there are two types of flows that are currently being implemented for the uh, uh, for milestone two linkage that are the user initiated linking and the hip initiated linking so yes. if you uh, uh, so whatever records you would be linking uh, either from the hip side or user would be initiating from your uh, user would be searching it on uh, on his behalf so that would be linked on the abdm network okay yes. so that that application that record would be reflecting on the uh, personal health record application you can yeah. say either abha app or any other personal health record application that would reflect under my record section of the person because yeah. uh, here patient would log in uh, with his id with his abha address yes yes in that case yes. so that would be visible to him in and that number would reflect on the dashboard yes when yes. he links his record so based on that i think incentive would be provided yeah uh, thank you sir and second question uh, so already i mailed this uh, integration support team regarding uh, the apis are not clear in the phr side okay so uh, we integrated m1 successfully using uh, the apis whatever we are but m2 and m3 are facing some issues like uh, fetching the consent uh, consent list and all so please can you uh, is there any option to call one to one session like then you can it's uh, easy sir, what, for what, what, for, what yes. is your entity type first of all wellness uh, entity is our health health care facility sir like uh, is private or government pri private so sir i think so uh, the respective poc would definitely reach out to you because uh, no, sir i mailed uh, uh, man, last monday okay still i got to, today i got mail like the we uh, so we have escalated the issue with the technical team we will revert once the resolution received from the tech team i got the mail from this is there any chance to call one to one calls or then we have the some no, issues no, no, no. Oh, sir, there is there there is just one email ID that has been provided integration dot support. I think so. The, the respective POC would reach out. Sir, to if you that. can again uh, do the top up on that mail, and yeah. uh, I'll just request somebody from that team to get in touch with you as soon as possible. Okay, please, ma'am. Because we start in uh, the second thing. Uh, so, can you please uh, arrange one uh, webinar for the PHR uh, user PHR uh, integrators? because the yeah, apis because... and the data uh, not uh, not uh, there in the websites and all so we are getting some uh, difficulty to understand because last call uh, what uh, what we found like the apis are not uh, correctly uh, uploaded in the website and there they the postman oh. collections so session you wanted to have with respect to integration right yes yes phr the mobile app uh, integrations sure 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 we can we can do it 
We will first check with the team and then then arrange it. Uh, we'll yes, can can okay. uh, we have your contact number? I mean, uh, or your email ID? Yeah, uh, I have. Where can I share, ma'am? You can put it on the chat, sir. Oh, okay, ma'am. I will share to you. Sure, Thanks, sure. ma'am. Thanks. Uh, Venu. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, hi, Venu. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I am from uh, Azorian Software Solutions uh, from Chennai. All right. Ma'am, uh, can I get this uh, documentation related to this uh, uh, digital health screen? You mean uh, uh, the PPT yeah, or the recording? No, 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 ma'am. This PDF, uh, the documentation which you shared. All right, all right. We will share that to you. Uh, we, we will put on the website also in two, three days. Okay, fine. And one more thing, ma'am. You can, you can put your email ID to us. We will share that with you. Sure, sure, ma'am. And uh, one more question, ma'am. Uh, we are uh, we have got our client ID and client secret related to the sandbox. And currently, uh, uh, I am the person who is uh, doing that uh, M1 integration part. Can can I get to know that uh, to whom I can contact? Like, uh, we don't know who is our POC and we don't know whom to contact. I just mail to that integration dot support uh, uh, mail. Uh, yeah, sir. Sir, ask, uh, first of all, let me know what is the uh, your entity type might be private. Yes, sir. It's a private entity. Uh, sir, uh, the problem, uh, sir, the thing is that uh, there is only one side, one one medium where you can reach out. That is integration dot support, and the team will show that back to you. Uh, rest is that you can get your name noted, and we'll surely forward you forward your request to the consultant. Okay, actually, the M1 part is a bit uh, easy, sir, compared to the M2 and M3. Uh, we are facing yeah, some issues here. Uh, uh, so, sir, for okay. the time being, what you can do is that there is one webinars that are given to you on the uh, sandbox application. When you go on, uh, uh, there is a link that is sandbox.abdm.gov.in. Okay, you open that. Uh, there is one resources section, and in resources section, there is one webinar section. Yes, sir. We are going through that. Uh, still, uh, ah, some, so some you can refer. So you can refer to that webinar. Webinar ten, I think so. It, webinar nine or eight. That is regarding M one only. So it has all the APIs that are, uh, and even the documentation is also uploaded for that. Okay. Sir. Okay. So you can refer to that, and I think so. You won't face any problem regarding M one. And if you're facing any technical issue, then you can surely forward it. Rest, the APIs are the clearly demonstrated there. You will not face any difficulty. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Praveen Kumar. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I have two things. So one thing is already discussed a lot, but uh, I will again repeat it. Uh, exit process from sandbox uh, is really getting difficult for most of the uh, participants like I am a HMIS provider and uh, yep. more than 800 hospitals are already using, 100 big hospitals are using, but I am having that difficulty. Now I want to confirm one thing. Uh, I have done a lot of uh, uh, mail and all and I have uh, one mail from Suman Soft. Uh, dot com abdm at sumansoft.com now they have suggested certification implementation and all those consultancies uh, but i want to confirm that is there any government agency giving this kind of consultancy to complete this exit process or we have to pay that huge fee to third parties uh, sir, I think so for security audit, I think so there would be some government agencies that would be referring to your security audit report. Uh, but for functional testing, I think so you need to get it verified from the security, the respective agencies. But for the exit process, I think so you can complete your exit procedures your, yourself only if for the email, if the email ID is yours, your respective uh, email ID. So you can complete it by yourself. You just need uh, to upload your security audit certificate, functional testing report, and the respective GST or uh, organization GST or PAN certificate for the sandbox exit procedure. Okay. 
now ultimately uh, uh, until we are integrated with abdm there is no use now for integration process we have to go through some agency which uh, you have uh, specified is this the scenario or uh, there is other way where directly we can Sir, for 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 for, uh, for integrating uh, if you are asking for functional testing or security audit Yes, yes, you need to refer to some uh, some of the agency if you are private. Okay. okay. So you okay. need you need to refer to some of the agencies for functional testing, and that cost you have to only bear it. Okay. And uh, Suman Soft is one of the agency. Sir, I am not. You need to check your uh, for security audit. You can check it on the certain impaneled agencies, or uh, there must be some document that must be provided to you for functional testing report. Uh, why don't you uh, share this that which are the agencies who are going to do this thing sir we cannot share we cannot share it okay that is your your call and you can download it from the certain website we cannot we cannot provide it we cannot provide you that miss what i am trying to understand how nha is going to do this thing now what do you suggest us to do sir we cannot suggest anything it's totally your call mm -hmm. And uh, second part is uh, like uh, we, we are having a ERP level HM, uh, yes. Then the pathology is one module out of that. And uh, that uh, uh, um, then uh, radiology is their pathology and so many others. Then how do okay. you count a uh, patient? The, the thing in the beginning, which you have been explaining, ma'am have been explaining uh, about uh, five rupees per, but one patient which comes, uh, who comes for uh, OPD, he will go to pharmacy also, he will go to laboratory also, he will go to radiology. Then all those things will take place within that uh, span of the transaction. Then how you will count that? Sir, we would be able to count. We would be able to count only one transaction for that day. Okay. We will not be able to count it as five because it is not applicable as per one and five clause. So one transaction per day can only be counted. Right. But uh, if uh, LIMS is separate, let's say, in the same hospital, then you will be counting two or LIMS will be counting one. Yeah, for, because then, sir, because then the entity is different now. Yes. Then yes, we will uh, count as two. Then again, yeah, the then same thing uh, that uh, that way, like the same provider is providing, all the facilities will be losing on that. Sir, so, uh, this is what uh, the policy says as of now. But if entities are different, we would count as two. But if the entity is same and the patient is same, then only one transaction per day can be counted. Fine. Now, again, my concern is not the incentive. My concern is uh, that integration part. And please see into this. I will again request uh, not only me. Uh, many other HMIS providers are struggling to get integrated. And... Uh, uh, you have to simplify that process somehow. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Shilpi, uh, you have Shilpi, you have any question? Gaurav Banerjee. Yes, I have some question. I have already posted in the chat box. However, I am uh, same. I'm uh, telling that also. We have created a virtual facilities for Shastra Ingit. We provide teleconsultation services in Shastra Ingit. So we are eligible to eligible for DHS or not? Yeah, teleconsultation is eligible. But again, virtual facility, that... virtual facility is not virtual... eligible. Also. No. Uh, so basically, you are uh, a digital solution company only, right? Yes. But then teleconsultation uh, is going to be eligible. Only thing that virtual hospitals are not eligible. Okay. Okay. And my next question is, if a facility register for DH is in need of April, will they be able to get the entire incentive from January 2023 to till date? Yes. Yes. But from January to March, you will get as per the old policy. And okay. from April, you will get as per the new policy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Nisha Singh. 
Nisha Singh. Policy. Yeah, hi. New policy to come. Did you change it? Hello, am I audible? Yeah, Nisha, Nisha, tell me. Yeah, so uh, my first question was included by Mr. Praveen that uh, you will be counting the transactions happening for the same patient as one, be it in lab right. or diagnostic or everything. So I would request you to relook into it because a hospital will want one solution which will solve all their problems if they are getting all the modules in one solution. And the second thing, second question I was having was that if a patient is admitted in IP emergency or daycare, in that case, how you will consider the transactions, how the counting will be done? So counting would be happening as per the same clause. So if the patient is admitted for, uh, suppose for 10 days, and during that duration, okay. uh, in that duration, patient will be having multiple uh, lab tests and everything. Correct. Correct. So you will be counting. So we would be able to count as five out of out of those ten days stay. Okay, no five matter transactions. the transactions are related to laboratory and everything. So you will completely against that particular UHID. You will count as five transactions. Correct, correct, correct. five transactions. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, Nisha. Uh, Dinesh? Yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to check if this is applicable for blood banks as well. We have a blood bank traceability software which is used by government hospitals and blood banks. Right now, our facility, ha right now, our policy has not included blood banks, uh, but we might consider it in the future. Right now, it is for hospitals, uh, labs, and clinics. So, you are an independent blood bank. Yeah, yeah. So AIMS Hospital, ILBS, a lot of government institutes are using a solution which tracks the entire donor cycle wherein a lot of HIV, HBSCG, SCV, MPV, VDRL tests are doing the antibody screening has been done and stuff like that. So uh, we, we might done. include it in the future, um, but not right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Because uh, I mean, we recently got a request from our customer Eames Hospital Blood Bank that they want to, I mean, they have got a mail stating to be a part of ABDM. So they wanted us to be a part of it. So that is how I wanted to cross check as such. All right. All right. Uh, Dhruv, do you have any questions? <clears throat> uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, uh, related to that uh, facility you are put. Uh, how we will be able to get this uh, QR code? The, the QR code of the facility? Yes, uh, the QR code of the facility uh, that can be scanned by uh, PHRA. So you can contact the IT department of that hospital. They can help you with that. Uh, you have to generate the QR code of the facility. First of all, your software should be ABDM compliant. Yes. Okay, second thing, uh, the, for, it should be live with Milestone 2 at least. Second thing is that that your uh, the software which you are using, its bridge ID should be linked with it. And when you will link link it, there would be an option to generate a QR code to, uh, uh, for the facility. Okay. So then uh, you can generate it. And now By logging into the, you, you can, you need to log in, in log in onto the HFR. Okay. Uh, that is the mm. facility manager. Sir, sir the will... facility manager. Uh, sorry, I'll go on. So the, the facility manager, which is creating a facility or uploading the facility data for creation. So he can log in with his HPR ID and then he will create that facility and then link the bridge ID with that facility. And then it will get the option to generate the QR code. Okay, uh, so for for the sandbox, I created one facility and uh, I created one uh, professor ID, ID, HPR ID, and I able to link yep. uh, with my bridge and uh, I able to generate that uh, QR code. But uh, as per that uh, standard documentation, uh, that uh, QR code contains a app ID in that middle and uh, all that things are to be implemented, but that generated QR code doesn't have those details and that's why i was uh, uh first of all uh, how we while, can... gen while generating the qr code there are set of apis that you need to pass on uh there but there might be a documentation of scan and share that would be shared with you 
after generating the QR code that you have to uh, implement those APIs. And secondly, you should have your queue management tool available with you, which will manage those tokens. Uh, get tokens are generated at the time of the sharing, uh, uh, performing a share profile functionality. Uh, right now, I, I was just talking about that uh, generating the QR code uh, that can be placed at that uh, facility desk or that OPD registration disk. And uh, from that uh, disk, uh, that patient can be stored. That QR code uh, can be generated by API or uh, it must be generated by that uh, UI uh, you are referring right now. Is there any- Sir, the QR, code? Sir, the QR code which would be gener generated, you can, uh, you can keep it anywhere at the hospital, okay? Uh, uh, you uh, that uh, uh, respective help desk you can arrange uh, or whatever you want to think that is totally your call at uh, whichever hospital you want to implement scan and share. Uh, the second question is uh, related to that uh, care context linking. Uh, in that uh, milestone two, uh, the patient uh, can discover that uh, care context and link by themselves. So in that scenario, uh, who will be getting this incentive? Sir, can you repeat your question once again? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, so in the milestone two, uh, that uh, patient can discover that health record and uh, link this head record with the care context. Now, as, as the patient uh, himself or she can link uh, that uh, records uh, at that time, uh, who will be uh, getting this uh, incentive, a patient or the hospital or that uh, uh, service provider. See, sir, uh, as I told you in the eligibility criteria that the hospital is going to get 20 rupees per, per transaction after 100 transactions are, are crossed. Against that particular hospital as a digital solution provider, you are going to get rupees five per transaction after that particular hospital has crossed 100 transactions. So basically both the hospital as well as the software provider, they both are getting incentives with that transaction. Uh, but as per patient that, is not getting any. Okay, so as per that uh, low or close, Whenever we are linking any health record with that uh, consent manager, at that time, that uh, incentive will be calculated, correct? Now, the patient is going to be linked. That uh, health record. Link so, who is going to be linked? Yes, who is going to be linked? So, you are asking PHR specifically for your PHR? Yes, yes, yes. So PHR app may be, look, the hospital will go to the hospital. Plus, the hospital may be used in the hospital. उसको जाएगा इंसेंटिव्स यहां पे लेकिन पीएचआर आपको नहीं जाएगा जो कि मैंने आपको स्लाइड में ही बताया था पर हॉस्पिटल का जो एचएमआईएस है उसको जाएगा ओके ये स्पेसिफिकली मैं आपको स्कैन एंड शेयर की बात कर रही हूं सर उसके ये कह रहे हैं uh, no, I'm not talking about the scan and share. I'm just talking about that uh, uh, linking of that uh, health record. Am I audible? Sir, just a second, just a second. Just yeah. give us two, two minutes, sir. Yeah. So, sir, basically the hospital and HMIs both will, will get the incentive in this case. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of two more questions. Uh, one is related to that uh, if the patient using a multiple ABI address, uh, then okay. the incentive will be calculated on the ABI ID or the ABI address? ABI address. 
uh, by address. Uh, right. That can be at the data ABDM. Yes. 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 Okay. And uh, now I have the last questions. Uh, so uh, we are building uh, some sort of solution for that uh, HIP, HIU, Health Local, and the uh, PHRS. And uh, now uh, can we define a different uh, bridge URL for that each type of that uh, individuals? Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. It is up to you because I think so. Every bridge ID cannot be same for uh, uh, every uh, every solution. Okay. So in that case, uh, it would be different uh, different bridge ID for every uh, uh, health solution. So you will have to build a separate bridge ID. You need to register on Sandbox separately. Okay, and for, for that, each solution, uh, for that uh, we need to uh, get that client ID and the client secret for each and every solution. Yeah, 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 yeah. For each and every solution. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's it. All right, sir. Uh, Bal Krishna Yadav. Hi, good evening, uh, ma'am, and good evening, everyone. My name is Bal Krishna. I'm from Tattu Foundation. And uh, my question is regarding so, actually, we, we uh, developed a, a HMIS for the government of uh, Nagaland. And the, uh, that HMIS is uh, running in uh, 11 district hospitals uh, in uh, Nagaland. So uh, now we 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 are uh, in process of integration with uh, Abha. So we have almost done those things. Uh, so my question is like uh, uh, in in the Nagaland, as the internet and all those things are not very good. So we have established separate uh, servers in each hospital, and if if those hospitals will be connecting. And as we have uh, one one uh, uh, ID like that uh, Braze ID, so can all those eleven host hospitals separately can use same ID, or how how it will be? How they will? Yeah, they can use they can using. use the same Braze ID. They can use the same Braze ID, sir. Okay, they can use same Braze ID, but yes. how they will be differentiated? Absolutely. So they would be differentiated on the basis of their HFR ID. You need to register those facilities on health facility registry. So there would be assigned separate IDs and based on that, they would be differentiated that how many hospitals would be sending how many reports. Okay. So for each hospital, they, they have to sign in with their uh, hospital, uh, their, that HFR ID. Yes. yes HFR yes. portal, right? Yeah. Okay. And one more question. Uh, Actually, here in, in UP, we have uh, developed another application, which is called uh, Mantra application, which is a, a, a labor room application. So, uh, and it is being used uh, uh, in, in entire state around uh, mm. more than 5,000 facilities are using. And that is only for the labor room. So for that also the, the process will be same right uh, so does it contain any kind of hi types like health record you are saving is it an hmis that has been used for the labor room or something uh, like so that any health record? hello sir are you there yes yes we are saving uh, the end hello Am I audible? Yeah, sir. Yeah, you are audible, sir. Okay, so uh, yeah, we we are creating a health health record. Like we are uh, uh, digitizing the process of uh, entire delivery process from the admission to the discharge. So that is kind of a health record, and we are uh, capturing that. So that also can be uh, linked. Yeah, you can you can use that sandbox. You can use uh, you, but this process would be the same. But you will have to go through each and every milestone. That's it. Yeah, yeah. We 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 are in process of that also, and that is also mm -hmm. for the government of uh, UP uh, uh, for yeah. the NHM. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you need, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue. 
yes so so same process will be uh, uh, here also like uh, there are uh, more than 5000 facilities so for uh, but here the server is one and uh, data is uh, being stored in uh, one server and they are using uh, uh, the mobile application and they are capturing data from mobile application so can uh, uh, how can uh, we differentiate here that Uh, this record is from the this facility we have uh, anyways we have created the login ids for uh, each facility so do we need to uh, uh, combine their uh, uh, hfr id with that yeah. login or sir, sir that would be required that would be required okay okay for each and every hmis separate hfr id is required because there is no uh, solution that we can link multiple hrps Uh, uh sorry multiple uh, multiple hsp with the same facility so you need to, every time you are linking a solution you will have to separately register your facility okay fine yeah thank you okay aparna uh, are you there yes uh, yeah i 